Next, we have program.cs. This is the file that will be responsible for running the application. Once we open program.cs, you can see we have a variable builder where the web application.createBuilder is passed with the built-in arguments. When you run with the .NET command, you can pass custom arguments here if you want. With that, it will configure the application and it will create the web application builder object. Now, in the previous video, we saw that we can use dependency injection with .NET Core. When we want to register anything with our dependency injection container, we will be doing that right here. So let's say if we want to register our database or email or anything else, we will have to do that between the builder and before we call build on that builder object. So right here, we are just adding one service to the container, which is builder.services.addController.s with views. We are adding this service to the container because we are using MVC application for our project. If you were using Razor Pages, then the service will be different. Now, in the future videos, when we configure database in our project and we add that to dependency injection, we will be adding a new service here in our container or DB context. If you are working with any version prior to .NET 6 or even some of the initial preview versions of .NET 6, then this file was divided into a separate startup.cs class file. And the services that we add to container were inside a method configure services, and everything from line 9 onwards was inside a configure method. So, what we have on the top is we will be adding services to our container. Then we need to configure request pipeline, and that pipeline will be configured from the highlighted section. Now you might be wondering, what is this pipeline? The pipeline specifies how application should respond to a web request. When your application receives a request from the browser, the request goes back and forth through the pipeline. Let me switch to the presentation here. We have different browsers here, and then we have a pipeline. The pipeline specifies how application should respond to a request that is received. When your application receives a request from the browser, the request goes through the pipeline. In the pipeline, you can add items that you want. Pipeline is made up of different middlewares and MVC is a type of middleware itself. So if we want an application to be built using MVC, we have to add that middleware. Other example could be authentication middleware, authorization middleware, and so on. What exactly happens is when your request will go through each of the middleware, it gets modified by them, and eventually it is passed to the next middleware. If that is the last middleware in the pipeline, the response is returned back to the server. Let's take a look at the few middlewares that we have in our application. Let me switch back to the code here, and you can see in the pipeline, first we are checking if it is development or not in the environment. If it is, then we are adding the use developer exception page that will show you user friendly exceptions so that you can debug and solve them. But if it is not development, then we are just redirecting them to an error page. The next middleware is HTTPS redirection. And then we have a middleware to use our static files that are defined in www root folder. We also have a routing middleware and we have authorization middleware. When we add authentication to our project, we will have to add a new middleware inside the program.cs as well. Then we are using a map controller route that will map the different pattern that we have for MVC. Based on this routing, it will be able to redirect our request to the corresponding controllers and action. Then you should always keep in mind that order of pipeline is extremely important. The way you write middlewares in the pipeline, that is exactly how the request will be passed. So first routing will be done, 
and it checks for authorization and so on. So in this scenario, if you want to use authentication to your pipeline, we have a middleware which is app.useAuthentication. But if you do this, then it won't work because authentication middleware should always come before you authorize a user because you only authorize a user that is authenticated. That is the basic fundamentals of authentication and authorization. So if you place the pipeline in some different order, that will break things. Inside the endpoints here, you can see we have a controller name, an action name, and some ID. This controller route will make more sense when we understand routing in the next video.